Experts agree that Canada's climate future is not looking good right now. We've been seeing the impacts across the country. I know Canadians I talk to are concerned. There are choices ahead of us in terms of where to place our effort. And that's because we're warming two times faster than the rest of the world and three times faster up in the north. But there is still time, about a decade or so, to make changes, reduce carbon emissions, and avoid the worst effects of climate change. Hi, I'm Campbell Barron, and today I'm going to talk to you about carbon capture. Uh, you mind if I turn the camera for a second? You can actually like um, see my project uh, right here too. I was actually just working on it before you were here. This is Aaron Sarkar. He's a high school student from St. John's, Newfoundland. Aaron became fascinated with carbon capture a year ago. So fascinated that he designed a science project to show how carbon dioxide can be captured and recycled in soda bottles. And that's essentially what carbon capture is. Finding ways to remove carbon dioxide from the pollutants that are the biggest cause of climate change. Algae, they're just like marine plants. They have photosynthesis, right? That's what they do. So they're capturing carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen. When algae captures carbon dioxide, you can actually use this microalgae that you're using for many different uses. For example, you can use it for biofuels, aquaculture, pharmaceuticals. As you know, a lot of kids, their their first ever science project, I know mine was like this too, uh, you know, we make the volcano, the baking soda and vinegar, we put that together, boom, explosion. So I thought, okay, baking soda and vinegar, what does that release? Carbon dioxide. So I need to capture carbon dioxide. I can't have the carbon dioxide go back into the bottle, so I clip the pipe heading from the bottle to this carbon dioxide holding chamber, and then I turn on the air pump, and this air pump is connected to the algae. So I have it going from, I have the algae going from bottle to bottle to bottle, and all of a sudden, I just push down all the syringes, and all the carbon dioxide gets infused with the algae. And turns out, I ended up capturing close to just about 100% of the carbon dioxide I uh, put into it, which is kind of cool. This idea to me felt like this idea could one day actually become a possibility. And if enough research was put into it, if I can do this in my bedroom, you know, if we work hard enough and we, if we keep putting in the research, keep on grinding, I'm like positive that one day we can really make something out of this. I'm currently driving to Markham, Ontario to visit a company called Pond Technologies, who's working on a way to capture carbon directly from smokestacks. My name is Steve Martin. I am the CEO and founder of Pond Technologies. What exactly is carbon capture? Carbon capture and storage is the removal of carbon dioxide, which we're very concerned with in pollution, and finding some way to store it. Generally speaking, yeah. we put it in a hole underground. We don't do that. Um, in our case, the algae eat the carbon dioxide. It's their food. Can this technology actually um, prevent Canada and the world from future climate catastrophes, is it going to be effective long term? There's nothing more effective at eating carbon dioxide than algae. If we were to install our technology on the largest emitters of carbon dioxide in North America, we could overnight change the carbon emissions profile. We could overnight affect the environment. Welcome, we're at Markham District Energy. Yeah. Uh, Markham District Energy is a power plant. Here they burn natural gas, they turn it into heat, electricity, and CO2 emissions. Any power plant would send their CO2 emissions up the smokestack. What Markham District Energy does differently, they actually send the emissions through those pipes. Some of it goes up the stack, some of it goes into our trailer. And here we use the CO2 to feed our algae and grow algae in there. Basically, what we have in here is algae, yeah, emissions, and lights. And you can see it's yeah. actually green, this one. There's yeah, it is. There's some criticism with this technology, and many people think that resources would be better spent on wind and solar as opposed to carbon capture and technologies. What do you say to that? Well, I say that you're not going to fly an airplane on a battery, so we're not going to, you're going to be burning fuel. If we want to have a realistic view of what the world's going to look like, we're part of a solution. Is carbon capture technology a silver bullet? It is not a silver bullet. And in fact, there is no one silver bullet. Mm -hmm. Fighting climate change and curbing climate change is going to take hard work. However, 
Different technologies like carbon capture and storage are great tools that we have at our disposal. They require different political systems that value carbon in its stored form. If we can achieve that, then this will be one tool in our arsenal mm -hmm. of tools that will help us address climate change. So that is carbon capture. On its own, it won't stop climate change, but experts agree that new technologies have to be part of the solution. The best and fastest way to reduce carbon is by not using fossil fuels. But we can only do that if we replace fossil fuels with energy that has zero emissions, such as renewable energy. For CBCKidsNews.ca, I'm Campbell Barron.